Hello and welcome back to our Chorier's Pigments 3 tutorial series. Um, in the last episode, we had a look at additive synthesis for the first time, surely one of the, the nerdiest of all uh, synth concepts. Today, we're going to try to find out how to make it musical. Um, we've got a, a really great set of modulation features in pigments. We'll have a look at some of those. Just before we set off, um, if you're enjoying the series and you want to help support me and my channel, uh, have a look at the Patreon link below. That's the best way to do it. Now then, the spectrum page. This is uh, it's a dual spectrum. We've got two different wave shapes here, spectrum A and spectrum B. And what this allows us to do is basically superimpose a virtual equalizer curve over the top of whatever um, partial pattern we've got. So I've reset us back to a completely default synth. I'll use the low C. So there's my C1 in all of its sawtoothy goodness. If I select this notch spectrum, I'm going to turn the volume all the way down so I can press a key and talk over the top of it. We don't particularly, just for the moment, need to hear it. I want to show you what's going on. If I introduce depth, then we begin to start to draw this notch shape. And as we do so, you can see the equivalent notch has been cut out of the partial curve. That in turn, is having a direct impact on the shape of the wave itself and in turn it's going to sound different so having done all of that i'll turn the depth back down i'll bring the sound back in now let's hear what that sounds like so i'm scooping out entire sections of the frequency curve so that's spectrum a Spectrum B is currently set to this move wave. You can see it's a deeper, jagged line. We get to Spectrum B by turning the morph knob. It currently says 100% Spectrum A, and this morphs between those two spectrum waves. So if I get to 100% B, now we have the move wave being applied. And so when I press my note, there's our original sawtooth. And there's the waves being cut out of the partial curve. Once we've chosen the, the base tone that we like, let's say we quite like that as our kind of basic tone to work with, I'll move up to C2, it's a bit easier to hear up here. Now the section knob determines the zone of the partial, the entire partial range over which this EQ curve is going to be applied. So if I turn it up high enough or low enough, it stops having an effect at all. And it goes without saying that all of this stuff can be assigned to modulation targets and we could have an LFO doing this automatically. And that you would be able to control, you know, determine the range of the LFO that sounded good you just built yourself a brand new dynamic filter. We've also got um, high cut and low cut at the left and right hand sides. And you can see it's scooping out the low and high frequencies. Low cut in particular is dramatic. The HPF effect. Reset all of that back to zero so that we can have a look at this window pane over here, the partial modulation mode. So everything that we've dealt with so far has been in um, modulation mode one, which is window. 
Uh, it's not been easy to tell that we've been in that mode because our position and window size is at minimum. So let's have a look at what's going on over here. If I, once again, turn the volume down so that I can hold this note down, there's a little gray rectangle over here. That is your partial window. So what's actually happening is that any modulation or effect that's being applied as far as the window is concerned is only being applied to the fundamental. If I make the window size bigger, you'll see this thin gray rectangle get wider. There it is. And if I move the position, you'll see it move forwards and backwards through the range. You'll also see it change size. It's the number of partials over which it's having an effect. And of course, partials are logarithmic. So down at the fundamental, the window's at its biggest visibly, but it's always covering the same number of partials. So what's it doing within that range? Well, we've got two controls. We've got a gain to control the volume of the partials in the window. And we've got an FM knob to control the frequency modulation of the partials in the window. It's not covering the entire partial range. So let's bring the sound in and hear what all that sounds like. Now with careful control of this gain knob, you can turn, you can basically use this window as a notch or bandpass filter. If I scoop it so that there's no partials in the middle of this window and then move the position, you'll see it behave like a notch filter and watch it on Insight below as well. So it's acting like a notch filter because the gain's currently set negative, set it positive. And now we're boosting those frequencies. And we've got a bandpass filter. Let's mess with the FM. Now, can you hear that really kind of sharp difference as I'm moving the, as I'm moving this knob? The the volumes of the various partials are kind of really harsh, and you're hearing them kind of snap into place. We can lessen that effect by introducing smoothing. Smooths the transitions between all of those changes in amplitude out. Now I'm controlling the range, the zone, over which the frequency modulation is being applied. The second of the modulation modes is called cluster. Now cluster modulation is a 60s sci-fi dream that you can get some really kind of robotic sounds out of this. What's basically going on here is that we're going to choose a number of zones and we call them clusters and we're going to pack partials into those clusters. And what, what that basically means is that we're going to be focusing on particular frequency ranges. It's the weirdest concept. Don't know who thinks of this stuff. So I'll pull the volume down pretty low so that we can see it visually and then we'll turn it up a bit later. So let's give ourselves three clusters so that they're fairly easy to visually identify. And the position knob is going to tell us where those three clusters are going to live. And you can see the area of the partial graph where they are. Now, if I introduce, if I increase the number of partials in those zones, I'm basically packing more and more partials into those spaces. And the density determines how tightly together they're clustered. So you can see me, they're really clearly defined now. So now that we can see what's going on, Let's bring the volume up and listen to some of this stuff. Ah, 
absolutely insane. So once again, I know I keep repeating this, but it's really worth, it's really important to bear in mind, modulate this stuff, get different LFOs or functions operating on these different knobs, and you've just got an absolute sci-fi fest. Well, I think that that's an interesting sound. Somebody somewhere must be able to use that. The last of the three modes is the Shepherd Tone mode, and I've actually set myself up a preset because I didn't want to have to remember what all of the settings are. Shepherd Tones um, are tones that give the auditory illusion of going up forever. It's basically <clears throat> the idea of choosing octaves of tones and concentrating over a very big span of, of octaves and accentuating the notes in the middle and reducing the volume of the notes on the outside. And what you basically get is something that sounds like it's going up or down forever. Now, in order to get this effect running, you need the help of an LFO. So I've already plugged this LFO in. So we've got LFO one on a really slow curve and you can see it just scaling down and it's mapped to this phi knob. So what this basically does is allow you to transition very smoothly from one partial to the next. What I really need to do is press a key and we'll watch the relative volumes of the partials and listen to the fact that the tone never stops going down. It's kind of crazy. This last partial you'll see get quieter and quieter and then eventually it will disappear. And now this is the quietest partial. But because it gets quieter, you don't focus on it. You focus on the partial that's next to it, which is the loudest one. And so all you really hear is the thing just going down. You never hear the tone disappearing off the bottom. You can hold it down forever and it just constantly basically sounds like it's going down. It's a great effect. Now it's very cool and very good fun. And in your entire life, you might use it once. <laughs> so now you know where it is for that one time in 15 years time when you think, you know what? That's my moment. I'm using the shepherd tone. That's the additive synthesis engine done. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.